This project is in Wood Magazine, issue 175, March of 2007. And inside it shows step by step how to make these and gives the patterns. I've glued my patterns to this piece of wood. This is just under an inch. The recommended thickness on these was three quarter. I'm going to make mine a little bit thicker. I have most of the blanks cut out. The pattern is glued to the thick piece of wood. It will be attached to one of these thinner 3 16 pieces with double sided tape. I'll drill a hole in here and cut this out on this inside dotted line which is the inside of the box. And then this piece will end up becoming the inside portion of what will be the lid. These have all been cut out on the scroll saw. When that comes straight off like that, you know that's a straight cut. Now we take that and we remove this back section. And that will end up being part of the lid that goes in there. Now I pry this piece off. And remove the tape. I glue this onto this other piece of wood. When it's dry, we'll cut this out to the outside line. And this piece is permanent. That's the bottom of the box. After gluing the 3 16th back onto the box, I attached a 1 8 inch thick piece of plywood with double sided tape. That will also be cut to the same shape as the pattern and will serve as a backer board for the small pieces that get glued to the lid. After I cut out the outside of the frog, I went ahead and I cut out the duck. I removed the 1 8 inch backing plywood and I tried to put the lid in here and it wouldn't even come close to fitting. I tried the duck and it would not fit. The plug will no longer go in there and the plug will no longer go into this one. They sat overnight and I had not checked for that this morning. So I had to sand about a sixteenth of an inch off all the way around the outside of this lid. And I had to sand quite a bit off of the lid for the duck. I tried the plugs and the two bears and they go in and out very freely as does this one. I put a couple of screws on the back of this guy so it wouldn't go all the way in. It's interesting because all of these were cut out of the same block of wood. I went to the bandsaw and removed excess material around here just to make this as thin as I could before I go in here and cut this out with the scroll saw. This is an inch and five sixteenths thick. Cutting it with the scroll saw, it does get hot. Wood is an insulator. So if that's getting hot, this outside edge is trying to expand. It could curve inwards. When you're cutting this out, you want to try and make as straight a cut as possible. But, because of the wood grain, the small blade, sawdust getting packed around the blade, that blade can be caused to deviate. Now this one 
will come out through the bottom and it will not come out through the top. And the saw blade was burning a little bit in here, back here, and back here a bit. And those cuts are tapered and that's just enough to keep that from coming out. So to fix that, I took this pattern, I turned it upside down, and I set this on top of it. And with a sharp mechanical pencil, traced all the way around the inside of the box. When I recut that on the scroll saw, and now that will go in. I need to attach the plywood backer to the lid. So I took these plugs and I sanded down one face an equal amount to the thickness of the lid. Those go in. The lid is now flush with the edge of the box. I can now glue this on here, making sure that I don't put so much glue in here that it'll squeeze out and attach itself to the box. That would be a disaster. Put a clamp on there, let it dry, and then that lid will be centered on that plywood backer. I did the same thing for the frog, only in this case, because this plug was so messed up, I cut pieces of it away, then sanded the thickness down 3 sixteenths of an inch thinner, and now I can attach plywood backer to that. I rounded the edge of the lids with a roundover bit on the router table before gluing it to the ply. Then using the flex shaft tool and a drum sander, ground a bit of a bevel all the way around the edge of the ply. When the rest of the pieces are glued on here, that provides a bit of a reveal or a lip to where you can get hold of that to take the lid off the box. You can see how the bear turned out. I'm using a new toy. It's a Fordham flex shaft. This will run in forward or reverse. I'm using it with a foot control. It seems to have infinitely variable speed and it will go up to 18,000 RPM. This is 1.6 horsepower. This is a heavy motor. This thing weighs several pounds. And I have it hanging from the ceiling in my workshop. What I really like about this is the ability to control the speed with the sandpaper or the abrasive and slow it down and still have power to keep on working. Uh, one of the problems with Dremel tools is you have to have them wound up pretty tight to have any power. And at low speeds, it's pretty easy to stall them out. I bought this after making the mice and cheese project. And on that project, I got pretty annoyed with the Dremel flex shaft and it getting stalled out. Not being able to slow it down and still be able to do some of the work that I wanted to do. Not cheap, but it appears to be a clear-cut case of you get what you pay for. This is going to be throwing material back towards me. You want to be sure you're wearing a respirator and safety glasses. You always want to grind out towards a point. You don't want to grind into it. And with this grinder, I can reverse the direction of rotation.
You can tape the pattern to anything that's flat. I cover it with a piece of wax paper, then one by one glue all the parts together. And then you know when you get ready to put it on the lid for the box that it's going to fit. Using the new flex shaft tool, rounding all these corners off, it's been very economic on abrasive. I made all ten of these with these four sanding drums. A little bit of hand sanding. I tried some of 3M's high dollar flexible finger sanding polishing discs and so far I've not been overly impressed with them. All of the corners and surfaces have been buffed or burnished with these two felt discs. This started life as a one inch disc and this is a two inch. After you glue these together, these little pieces of wood can move around a little bit. You may have less than perfect alignment on the back side. When you go to match that with the backer board or backer ply, it may not sit exactly square. So I take these and I lap them flat. do the same thing with the matching side of the wood or the plywood. I do that until it looks like it's going to sit flat and it doesn't rock around anymore. I made 12 pieces. Each piece was finished with mineral oil. It soaks in well and brings out the color in the wood. It does not set up like linseed oil and it maintains a nice smooth finish. On one duck I use red oak and on the other white oak. I was able to obtain some scrap pieces of old cypress that was cut over 150 years ago and they built a sugar cane mill with it. This was then reclaimed from the sugar mill and some of these pieces were over two inches thick and they were four joist. You may wish to review my previous videos on gift projects. Click on the reindeer that will take you to the playlist. And thank you for watching my videos.